Welcome back to BlauDev, everyone. Today we're going to be going over Flutterfire Authentication 101. So we're going to be covering all the scene methods here. Sign out, sign in, reset password, verify email, set display name, check authentication, and sign up. We're going to be checking all of these, going through them all, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement it into your project. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we set up a Firebase project. Now, you're going to go to firebase.google.com and step through the project to set it up, and you should get to a screen like this once you're done. Next, you want to make sure that you add your app to Firebase, so you want to connect your Flutter project to Firebase, and you see here, I've already added the iOS side of things to my project. You can also add the Android as well, and when you click on this, it'll step you through some um, basic steps. You're going to basically find the package name and they direct you exactly where it is. So you're going to find your, in your app level folder, find your build.gradle file and look for the application ID. So it walks you through exactly how to do this. For iOS, you're going to do essentially the same thing, except you can ignore most of the steps that they tell you to do and simply place the Google file into your project where they tell you to. Outside of that, it's pretty straightforward setup. If you need more help on figuring out how to do all of this, you can check out my Flutter start to finish playlist. Um, when we go over the Firebase authentication stuff in that video, um, you'll see exactly how to set that up. Next, what we want to do is we want to go to authentication, and this is in the side developer tab over here, authentication, and we want to set up a sign in method. For the purposes of this video, we're just going to enable email and password. We're not going to cover Google, Facebook, and other social media platforms um, authentication today. I'll leave some links in the description below to some articles and other videos where that is discussed. And we'll get into it more um, in a future set of Flutterfire videos. This is just the 101 basics. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our project. And as I said, I've got all these methods set up. Um, the one thing I am gonna change though to start is I'd like to start with sign up. Um, however, in order to start with sign up, we need to make sure that we have a sign up button. So let's go down to the sign out. Where is that one? Right here. And we'll just change this to up. I'll comment this out as we will use it later. And we will call it wait sign up instead. Okay. The next thing we want to do is with all of our methods, we're going to call this await firebase.initialize app. Typically, when your project and what you should do is this should be called only once. The first time you enter your application, you should have some sort of way that this is getting triggered and that Firebase is getting initialized within your application. Um, since uh, this is just for demonstration purposes and we're going to be rebuilding quite a bit and we don't really know which button we're going to be pressing first. I'm just gonna go ahead and call it at the start of each method. But in your project, make sure you call this only once. So for sign up, we're actually gonna set up a try catch statement to start. And I'm actually going to copy and paste the catch statement from the Flutterfire documentation. I will put a link below both to this code and to the Flutterfire documentation for reference. And the reason I'm doing this is because they've already set up a really nice way to look for a weak password or an email that's already being used. So, and then any other exception, they'll also catch it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say await firebase auth dot instance dot create user with email and password. For email, I'm just gonna say blaudev at gmail.com. And for password, I'm just gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of a lame, weak password, but it should be good enough. I believe Firebase requires five or more characters in order for this exception not to be triggered. Okay, and then right after this, we're gonna do a print statement and just say success. Because if we hit this print statement, then that means that we have successfully created a user. Um, if any kind of exception is thrown and it was unsuccessful, it will hit this exception here. So let's go ahead and reload that. And let's click the sign up button. And it says success. And we can verify that it actually worked by going to Firebase, I'm going to reload this authentication page. And there we go, we have a user. The next method that we're going to go over is sign in. And what we're going to do here is in a similar manner, we're going to do a try catch statement. 
And we're only going to do these try catches for the sign up and sign in. On the other ones, you can, and it's good practice too, but we're not going to cover that in this video. If you want to see how to handle all the different types of exceptions, again, the Flutterfire documentation has a full list and they have references to the APIs as well. And so you can find what different types of exceptions you might expect and what type of catches you should implement should you want to add that into your methods. So I'm going to go ahead and once again, I'm going to grab the catch. So this will catch the most basic, um, basic errors that we'll run into when we're trying to sign in. And again, we're going to say await Firebase auth dot instance dot sign in with email and password. For email, we're going to do blildev at gmail.com. For password, whoops, password, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to add on a seven here just so you can see that this doesn't work. And if it's successful, it will hit print success. Okay, and that was the sign in method. So let's go, we got sign up. We already have the sign in implemented. Good, restart that. It's been restarted. And typically what you're gonna do with these methods in the future, um, when you're implementing your project, sign in would take something like this. It'd take in a string email and a string password, and that's what you would feed the method. I'm hard coding in these values um, because this is for demonstration purposes and to understand how these methods work. Um, obviously, hitting a button, you're not going to have hard-coded um, information for the user to sign them in and sign them up. The user needs to provide that, and then you need to pass it to these methods. And all of these are future void methods. Void meaning they don't need to return anything. They just execute, but there is no response being sent back to whoever called those methods. Okay. So going back to this one, we've set up the sign in with email and password. If it's successful, it'll hit success. If it's unsuccessful, which it should be because it doesn't have the correct password, um, it should say wrong password provided for that user. And we should see that printed out down here. So I'm going to restart it one more time just to be sure. Hit sign in. Wrong password provided for that user. Awesome. Let's take away that six now. Redo this. Success. So the user has successfully been logged in. Now we can check and verify that this actually happened. And let's see here, we have sign in. Let's call await check. Oh, what did I call it? Check auth. For check auth, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say Firebase auth. We're gonna call it auth is equal to Firebase auth dot instance. Then we're just simply going to say if auth dot current user is not equal to null, print already signed in, else signed out. Okay. So what should happen is when we press the login button, it should first sign the user in, then it's gonna check and see if they're authenticated. So let's go ahead and restart this, hit sign in. We should see two success messages. Actually, we should see a success message and then an already signed in message. There we go. So it signs the user in and it says the user is already signed in. Now what we wanna do is we wanna add a sign out method and I'm gonna go over here and I'm actually gonna revert the sign up back to sign out. And that way we can test and see if the user is truly getting signed in or out properly. And we can also show you how to incorporate sign out into your project. Okay, so we're gonna do a simple try catch except this one will be much simpler. Print e.toString. Okay. Then we're gonna say await firebase auth.instance.signout. It's that simple. 
Okay. The last thing we're going to do is print success. Because if we hit this, then we've successfully signed the user out. All right, we're going to reload this. So let's first sign the user in. User's already signed in. Then we're going to hit sign out, success, and signed out. Awesome. So that worked. So let's go ahead and move on to, I believe, reset password. Reset password is one of the easier ones. We just call await Firebase auth .instance reset send password email, reset email, wildev at gmail.com. Let me pull up in my email so that you can see the reset email get sent. Okay, we're going to hit reset password. Then I'm gonna wait a second and then we should see it in our email. There we go. Password reset link sent for our app. And we can go over another time on how to set up a custom email and change it so it doesn't say project 56238054 etc. Um, but to have a better, um, more presentable email. But that's all we're gonna do for reset password today. For verify email, we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna say user is equal to Firebase auth.instance.currentuser. Then we're gonna say user dot send email verification. So what this will do is it will, first we're gonna set what is the current signed in user. And then it's going to say send an email verification, um, which will send an email to whatever email stored in that user's um, authenticated account. So let's go ahead and do a hot restart. Send that verification email. And we got this because we have no user currently signed in. If we check auth, they're currently signed out. So let's sign them in first, and then let's send the email. All right, go back here, verify your email. Perfect, so that's working. Um, let's go ahead and move on to set display name. For set display name, we're gonna do something similar to verify email, and that we're gonna set up a user object. So we set Firebase auth .instance current user. Then we're going to call, say user .update profile display name wildf. So if you noticed, I'm going to just cut this really quick so you can see. We can update the email, password, phone number, and profile of the user. In this case, what we want to do is we want to update the display name, and so that's why we're going to use update profile. Another case for, um, of some, there's a, yes, that's it. There's a photo URL attached to the user, and I believe there's one more field, although I'm not going to lie, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. But for updating and setting the display name, um, this is all we have to do, is call update profile on our authenticated user. And again, this user needs to be signed in or else we're gonna get an exception, um, like this case. So let's sign the user out, set display name, and it's confused because no one is signed in. So we need to sign the user in, make sure they're signed in, then set the display name. Perfect. So you wanna make sure that the user signed in here. So you could do an instance like, um, in this method, you could say, you know, check if there's currently an authenticated user. If there is, then you can execute otherwise, send back some sort of response or error message or something to that effect um, to let the user know, hey, you have to sign in before you can do that sort of thing. Or simply place it behind your authentication wall so you can't even access it unless you're signed in. Um, that's the smarter move. Um, the last method we're gonna do so that we can prove that yes, we did indeed update the user's profile and set the display name is to check the display name. And what we're gonna do is we're once again gonna say user firebaseauth.instance.currentuser. And then we're gonna say, um, let's do print and let's say user.displayName. Okay, 
do a hot restart, check auth, we are already signed in. Okay, um, let's see, I believe I called this method on the display name method. Let's see here, hold on. Set to, yes. So if I just click this one more time, yeah, there we go. Blau dev. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this. I hope this was really helpful. If you found this video useful, make sure you click that like button and subscribe. I'm gonna keep on doing these videos for Flutterfire. Currently, they only have documentation on a handful of topics, but as those topics become more documented and readily available, I will continue to do videos on how to implement those into your project. And we'll dive a little bit deeper onto Flutterfire 201 and cover more in-depth topics such as social media authentication and so on. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys next time.